Did you know that you could use So What Pro to design your own name frame? What the heck is a name frame anyway? Stay tuned and you'll find the answer. Greetings and welcome to our channel. I'm Eve with The Baby's Booty. Today's video is a quick pick tutorial for So What Pro. So What Pro is an embroidery design editing software program. This tutorial will benefit those who machine embroider or wish to learn more about it. You should already have a machine and have purchased designs to fully benefit from this video. Our video today focuses on name frames. Name frames are a pretty cool embroidery feature that highlights a name. Here are a few examples of some baby bibs that I've designed with name frames. Um, they're commonly used for children and babies to design their name. Now with name frames, name frames can be quite simple to do in So What Pro. The way we begin is with a border. So right now we have a blank slate. Let's go up to uh, our add a border option and add a border is up here beside info icon view okay so let's go ahead and click add a border and see what this feature does for us notice it add a border stitches and it gives us many different options now this actual uh, feature is quite cool um, unfortunately I don't have time in this video to go into all of it and, it and we will eventually delve into each one of these to see what the benefits are for the time being, however, we're going to just stick with the rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and select a rectangle. Now with the rectangle, we need to uh, have an outline, a stitch property. And with the name frame, we uh, the preference generally is a satin outline, but you do have an option of a running outline, which is just a single straight stitch. You also have the option of a bean outline. You have blanket applique and satin applique. So yes, you can make your own applique in Sew so It Pro, but that's not what we're dealing with today. So we're gonna stick with satin outline. Whenever there's an embroidery design being stitched, I'm sure you're familiar with how there are foundation stitches that are done first, then the actual embroidery is put over the top of it. Well, those are the underlay stitches. So in So What Pro, whenever you're doing uh, a name frame, I suggest to go ahead and do the underlay stitch. Why not? Most uh, of the better embroidery designs have underlay stitches, so we want to have it. I'm sure there's probably a reason why someone would not want that. Um, but in my instance, with what we're doing today, we're going to go ahead and make sure that that box is checked so that we can have an underlay stitch with our frame. Now with a satin outline, there's four different options down here. The ones here on the right are pretty standard self-explanatory. They're border width of the rectangle and the border height of the rectangle. These are based on how big the name frame design is going to be. I'm stuck with four by four right now. So that's what I'm going to use. So I don't want the width of my name frame to be wider than four inches. So that's why it's here on 3.8. I actually need it just a smidge smaller than four inches. So it's at 3.8 inches wide. Now the height of the border of the name frame needs to accommodate whatever letters it is that you're gonna put in your design. So if your letters are an inch tall, then you want to make a name frame that accommodates that one inch. And I generally uh, suggest a buffer of a quarter inch, you know, between the size of the letters and the size of the frame. That gives you a good clear space around the letters and it's not squished up on the frame. So if you did one inch letters, I would say make your border height uh, 1.3 or 1.2, and that'll give you some space. Now, I actually am going to be using three quarter inch letters so I'm going to leave my border height at one inch. Again, that quarter inch of my size letters 
and the border height of the actual rectangle is going to be one inch and that gives me some space in between the name and the frame. Over here on the left, we're going to show you what the differences are with these thicknesses, the satin thickness and the satin stride. What do they mean? Let's find out. Now, my normal frame that I like to use with a name frame in the three quarter inch letters, uh, these are my normal measurements over here and my satin thickness and my satin stride is generally 20 and four. So what I'm going to do is up at the top, go ahead and put my normal frame. So this is my normal frame that I would use. Okay, so to show you how that looks when it's stitched out, we're gonna go up here to view and we're gonna add the texture in and that's what it would look like generally. Uh, not quite as sawtooth, but close. And it gives me some definition with the name when I have the frame set up. So what we'll do is go ahead and change the measurements on this satin thickness so that you can see exactly what the satin thickness does. It's actually the distance between the stride up and down of the actual satin stitch. So we're going to decrease it to, we'll say, five we're going to do that and as it shows here that's 0.1 millimeters so this is actually 0.5 millimeters uh different so what we'll do is select our square and hit okay look at how much skinnier this rectangle is versus the one up top so this is showing you that okay if you want a more narrow frame this is the measurement that you want to go with. So let's click up here again so that you can see it clearly. Instead of the satin thickness being 20, meaning 20.20 20 millimeters up and down here, you want it to be 0.5, which is, you know, a little bit smaller or a lot bit smaller, actually. Let's take this up to 35 and see what 35 looks like. And we'll add a square, which is what we're doing, the rectangle, and hit OK. Wow, look at the size difference between this one and this one up top. So this is what your actual satin thickness does, okay? So you can change this. You can play with it however you want. So what Pro leaves you in control of exactly how you want your frame to be. I love So What Pro for that reason itself, okay? So I'm canceling out of that for a moment so that we can go ahead and delete these two down here. This one up here was my rusty trusty go-to uh, name frame. So we're going to change the satin stride and show you what the satin stride looks like. So if the thickness is up and down, then the stride obviously would be side to side or how close those satin stitches are going to be. So this actually is four. So we're going to increase this to 20 just to see what it looks like. We're doing another rectangle because we want everything to be the same so that we can do a good comparison and hit OK. Look at the difference. The stride between those stitches are massive. Now, if you wanted to do a name frame that was zigzag, by all means, it's really cool. Go ahead and use it. And that's what you can choose, just showing you, you do have the option to do that. Let's add one with a different measurement. So we did four for this one here. Let's take this stride down to say one and see what that looks like. And again, we want to select a rectangle and hit okay. Look at how thick that is. Now, this is just showing in texture view. We're gonna take textures uh, off so that you can see the stitches more clearly. Look at how dense those stitches are. Also, take a look over here. This is the first one and this is this one here. So look at the stitches. 1,176 stitches to make that rectangle. The second one with the wider stride is 117 stitches is all it takes to make that rectangle. But look at number three. 2,293 stitches. This is a very dense rectangle. This could be good in application. So 
say, for instance, in uh, jean material, heavy, dense uh, canvas quite possibly could withstand this. Um, but if you're not wanting stitches that dense, I wouldn't put this on quilters cotton. I wouldn't put this on uh, flannel. I really wouldn't. Maybe it could be done on fleece. I'm not sure. I'd be sketchy. I I'd be skeptical to, to do this. So we're not going to uh, have this type density for our name frame. So, but Again, this is just an example purely to show you what the differences are, what your capabilities are in So What Pro, and what you can achieve if it's what you choose to do. So we're going to take this name frame that we've already created and actually for, let's see, we're going to view our grid lines so we can make sure everything is good and centered for the time being. And what we're going to do is turn this into an open name frame. Usually when you see the name frames, there's not uh, borders here on either side. So how do we take that off? Very, very simply. There's two different ways you can do it. We need to come up here to the cutting toolbar or you can hit alternate S on your keyboard. And this opens up uh, this toolbar to show you about cutting your pattern. So you can do select points or we can use the eraser. Really quickly, I'm going to show you the eraser. You can click the eraser and notice it gives you a little pink eraser. And you click, hold it down and drag it across what you want to erase. Just as if you were erasing this off of a piece of paper. It's that simple with So What Pro. So we're dragging this here and let go of the mouse when you don't have the mouse click notice it's not erasing anything else and now we want to hit close do you wish to perform pending erasures before closing yes i definitely do and look now you have an open-ended rectangle on this side that's just one way to erase some of these stitches the other way is we come open the cutting toolbar again and we want to leave it at select points. So what we want to do is select the area, draw a box basically around the area that we want to delete. Well, you don't actually draw. You want to connect four points to make a box around the area you're trying to delete. I want this whole end part taken off of our border. So. I know none of the stitches are past this point here. So I'm going to click one point here and see it leaves a little dot there. Now I want to come inside and I'm going to leave a dot here. And then I'm going to drop down here to select this. And notice it's drawing a box around everything. And I'm going to click here and there's a box. Now what we want to do is hit cut pattern. So when you cut the pattern, it gives you options. Remove the interior, remove the exterior, cut and save it all, or cut and just save the interior or just cancel it. We don't want to cut anything. Well, I don't want to remove the exterior of this box because the exterior is the rest of the border. I want to remove the interior because that's the part that I don't want. So we're going to say remove interior. And look it's gone now we're just left with these two bars in perfect selection perfect section for me to add the letters in the middle and we'll close this out because we're done and i'm going to go ahead and put the texture back on and let us go ahead and merge in our letters because we want to add letters to this now, if you've already opened up your letters before in so what pro which i have had some letters I can click info icon view and there are some letters already over here and these were the ones I actually was going to use three quarter inch that keeps me from having to go up here to file and hitting merge and going to the directory where those letters are and pulling them over so if you haven't then yes that's what you need to do is merge and then navigate to the directory where your uh, letters are that you want open them up 
and merge in the first letter. Then do info icon view in alphabet mode and add the rest. So we're going to go ahead and put in a name and we're going to say R U B Y. Now, this brings me to another point you want to keep in mind when you're doing a name frame. When you're doing a name frame, there are letters that have the hang down and that takes away from the three quarter inch uh, size restriction for your name frame. So notice in order for me to get all of that to fit in there, my name frame isn't big enough. So you want to keep that in mind when you're making your name frame. You want to make sure that all of your letters are going to fit um, in a row. You don't have any of them hanging down. So let's choose a different name so that we can keep things simple. And we're going to go with Alice. I'm going to close out info icon view. And I'm going to come up here and center it in the name frame. And there you have a name in a frame. Pretty much all it is to it. Uh, if this border is too big for the name frame, if, if you don't like all this extra space, how did we do it? We came up here one of two ways. We went select points and we clicked on the outside of the area and we clicked in how far we want it to go. Then we click down to get us a good uh, space to come out and then we come back over here and we close the box and then we hit cut pattern remove interior that's how you get rid of it or you can grab your little pink eraser and you can click hold it down and drag across the part of the design that you wish to erase and we're going to erase both of these on either side and there we are and we hit close yes I wish to perform those and here you have your name frame with your name in a smaller frame so yes there's more than one way to skin a cat in so what pro I do really suggest you take your time play around with it get the feel for it um, and that way you can become proficient at making your own name frames.